All right, it's Barry, and today on Great, I've got my 11 favourite seeds to sow in April. As temperatures increase and the chance of frost decreases, there's loads of seeds to start sowing. And if you've got a greenhouse or a cold frame, you can pretty much sow anything you want this month. And it should be protected from the last bits of cold, but do keep an eye out for extra low temperatures and make sure that any seedlings that you've got have some kind of cover, like a fleece or even a heater. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my guides and videos throughout the year to get the most out of your plants and garden. One of the best things about this month is that there's loads of options for sowing flowers straight out into the soil and the first one on for today's video is cornflowers which are part of the Asteraceae family. Centaurus cyanus is an upright annual growing up to 75 centimeters tall with simple or slightly lobed leaves and each plant develops a single deep blue flower head measuring three to four centimeters across and they bloom in late spring and summer. You can sow your cornflower seeds now directly into well-drained soil in a sunny position for flowers in the summer. I've sown an absolute load of cornflower seeds in my wildflower bed which is at the back of my allotment and I have made a video for it but it's taken a couple of weeks longer than I had planned because I managed to completely do my backing when I was digging the bed out but I'll get that video finished soon so that you can see what I have done over there. Another flower now and another member of the Asteraceae family, Calendula. Orange Calendula flowers are an ideal companion flower to go with your blue corn flowers to create a fantastic contrasting colourful display. Again these can be sown in place and they'll grow to around 75 centimetres tall and you'll want well drained soil in either full sun or partial shade and that'll do just fine for these. You can also sow them through autumn for late spring flowering but these will flower in late summer if you sow them now. And next up from the family Faberacea which comes from the word Faber which is Latin for bean, a great one for this month is the broad bean. Now broad beans are an annual plant producing two to four square sectioned upright stems between 40 centimeters to 1.2 meters tall. They develop clusters of scented black and white or dark red flowers and they're produced all the way up the stem followed by pods which are 15 to 30 centimeters long. You'd usually pick these when they're green as they do continue to turn black when they fully mature. The best grown in a sunny shelter position with fertile, moist, well-drained soil. Although broad beans are a fantastic plant to try because they'll grow perfectly fine in most soils. I've got a couple of broad bean plants growing here and these are around two to three weeks old and I'll be planting these out in the next couple of weeks. Next up is a direct relative of the broad bean, also from the Faberacea family, garden peas. And if you plan on growing some peas, check out my video on how to grow peas for some great tips and instructions. For the best results, peas need an open sunny position with really good drainage and it's best not to sow them in cold wet soil and they don't do too good in acidic soil either. If you're not sure on your soil pH or how to treat it, I have got a video for that as well. I'll leave a link in the description for both videos so that you can check them both out. Peas planted now will germinate and grow in no time at all, so make sure that you pick a spot for them to grow up with some string or some netting and another great thing about growing peas or beans is that once you've finished with all the plants you can dig them straight into your beds to give your soil a massive nitrogen boost. Next up we've got another relative of garden peas and beans, although these aren't really something that you'd want to eat, and that's sweet peas. When choosing between sweet peas and the perennial alternative Lathyrus, the main decision is whether or not the scent is important to you, or whether you prefer an annual or a perennial plant. Most sweet peas are highly scented, so choose these if you love a fragrant garden. Alternatively, the perennial Lathyrus are generally unscented, but there is an exception to the rule called Lord Anton's Blue Pea, which is a scented Lathyrus. Sweet peas only live for a year, and then they die off after they've set seed but luckily these are really easy to grow from seed so there's never really a problem growing them again for next year. Alternatively perennial species such as Lathyrus latifolius come back every year. Most Lathyrus plants are climbers so it's best to support them with canes or netting just like your peas and beans. You can sow annual sweet peas now and plant them out as soon as they're growing well but you can also direct sow them as well in April but do remember to protect them from birds and animals they really do like to eat the sweet leaves. Pot sowing is generally more reliable than direct sowing but both are an option. Sweet peas often have a hard seed coating that makes them more difficult to germinate so to soften that seed coat you can put your seeds on a piece of damp kitchen roll in an airtight container in your kitchen and sow them as soon as they start to swell up or begin to sprout but I haven't had any issues with germination by just sowing them straight from the pack so if you're not sure maybe try both and compare the results. Next up is my favourite variety of flowers to grow and that's sunflowers. Although most sunflower varieties have yellow flowers, sunflowers can also have crimson, orange, white and green flowers with loads of different combinations in between. 
annual sunflowers bloom from summer into autumn and depending on the variety they can take 11 to 18 weeks to flower from seed sowing so it's a really good idea to do some sowings every couple of weeks to keep a constant supply of flowers going right through to late summer to grow sunflowers you'll need a sunny sheltered spot and good soil and you want to protect your young plants from slugs and snails and water your sunflowers frequently and you can also give them a weekly feed as they grow tall you might need to stake them or fix them to a nearby support to keep them from falling over in the wind have a good look at the available varieties as some will grow 50 centimeters while others will grow over three meters tall so make sure that you have enough room before you pick your seeds and you want to sow your seeds in pots from april and plant them out when all the risk of frosts passed i'll be uploading my guide to growing sunflowers in the next couple of weeks i've got red sun claret f1 russian giants and vanilla ice to plant so don't forget to check that out if you'd like to grow some massive flowers and another one of my favorites to start off this month is pumpkins you can start them off in around the second week of april onwards to get a great start ready for flowering in the summer months pumpkins are really easy to grow and all they need is a sunny position plenty of water and shelter from cold winds the best part of pumpkin plants is of course the fruit and by the time autumn rolls around your pumpkins will be fully grown and ready to ripen in the sun just in time for halloween or for making soups or roasting Pumpkins are best grown from seed indoors, but they can be direct sown outdoors later in the year, like in late May or June, but they won't have the head start that indoor sown plants get. For early harvest in cold regions, sow your seeds indoors in 7cm pots from mid to late April, and the seeds are flat so you can sow them on the side 1cm deep, and then keep them at around 18 to 21 degrees C. If you'd like to check out my guide for growing pumpkins, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Next up is loofahs, which are a new one for me this year, but it's one that I'm really excited to try. Loofah seeds don't germinate quite as easily as cucumbers or courgettes so there is quite a bit of patience involved with them but it's also a really good idea to sow a few extra just to make sure that you do end up with enough plants. Loofah seeds benefit from being soaked for up to 24 hours before sowing just to help encourage better germination and then you can push them around 1.5 centimeters deep into a pot of compost. The main difficulty with loofah seeds is that the pots then need to be kept really warm at around 25 degrees celsius so if you've got one it's best to put your pots in a heated propagator box for the best results. Germination won't take very long at 25 degrees, so check back in a week, but they might take two or even three weeks to germinate at lower temperatures. There's loads of different types of melon seeds to grow, with some varieties growing better in different climates. Melons are sensitive plants, so they do need a warm, humid and sunny place to grow. In the UK, it's best to grow melons in a glass house or a polytunnel, which is exactly what I'm planning on doing this year. Sow your melon seeds one and a half centimetres deep from mid to late April in a propagator or a covered pot and keep them at 18 to 21 degrees C, which is 64 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And if they're going to be grown outside, harden off your plants from late May to early June once there's no danger of any frost and when they've got three or four proper leaves. On the subject of melons, an unusual one to try is cucamelons, which are also known as mouse melons. The cucamelon fruits are around the size of a grape and they look like little melons and taste like cucumbers but slightly sour. The best part is that they're usually ignored by pests and they're really easy to grow. Sow cucumelon seeds during April and May in a propagator on your windowsill or in a greenhouse and keep them at a temperature of around 22 to 24 degrees C. Sow your seeds at around one centimeter deep so that the blunt end faces downwards and then when the ceilings are large enough to handle you can transfer them into nine centimeter pots. Some other really easy ones to grow this month are cucumbers and gherkins and these are especially good to grow if you've got a greenhouse or a polytunnel or even a conservatory. If you're in a warmer climate you can grow them outside later in the year after starting them off indoors as well. Start your cucumbers in a multi-cell propagator and once your seedlings are large enough to handle you can transfer them into pots or even transfer them directly into a grow bag in the greenhouse. So make sure to give them support as they grow and then in around 12 weeks time you'll have fantastic cucumber vines and hopefully some flowers ready to grow fruit. Well that's all the seeds for today, hopefully you've got some great ideas for some fantastic plants to start growing this month. As always don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all the plants that I'm growing this year along with all of the guys that I've got coming up in the next couple of months. Let me know in the comments if you'll be growing any of these seeds this month or if you've got a favorite that i've missed off and i'll see you next time